Coming up on Hot Hardware, we're talking about SSDs, the new Connect R contest, and a whole lot more. Welcome to Hot Hardware's weekly video Sergeant Pepper podcast. The, the name is going to change, I promise, and, and one of you guys is going to win that. We'll talk about that later. I'm Aya Zaktar, along with Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. So we have here, we're going to check with Dave first. You know, what have you been up to? Let me, let me just guess what Dave's been doing this week. He's probably playing around with SSDs. Am I right about that? Oh, man, you're clairvoyant. It's like you got a crystal ball or something, dude. <laughs> Indeed, I do. Do you actually have perhaps an OCZ Revo Drive X2? Uh, I do. I do. I have one of those things. Um, and, and, and here it is. Here it is. Uh, it's a big slab of uh, silicon. Uh, lots of flash going on. Flash NAND memory. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, the Revo Drive X2 is a PCI Express, uh, it's PCI Express, excuse me, no ED, SSD, solid state drive, uh, that is a follow on the X2, hence the X2 version of the Revo Drive 1. And what it is, is basically a, uh, a, a double version or a double stacked version. If you can take a quick look at these cards, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a double stacked version of. Uh, basically a dual SSDs on each layer of the PCB. So the top PCB has a pair of SSD controllers. The bottom printed circuit board has a pair of SSD controllers. And there's a bunch of flash on both. So now you have, you know, four very fast Sandforce SSD controllers in RAID 0 uh, running on this thing, uh, connecting over a PCI Express slot, a by 4 slot, and um, Wicked Fast would describe it. So what kind of speeds are you getting? Is it as good as the first gen double uh, the speed or is it just a little bit better? Uh, double uh, the speed um, in writes uh, in some cases and uh, nearly double in reads. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 700 megahertz, not 700 megahertz, 700 megabytes per second, excuse me, read performance and um, you know somewhere in the neighborhood of five to 600 uh, megabytes per second write and it's the one of the fastest PCI Express based SSDs we've ever tested. We've tested the Fusion IO, IO Extreme cards, you know, with the, the custom Fusion IO uh, controller on board that uh, everybody raved about and is so darn expensive. Well, this thing goes for $619, not cheap, for 240 gig, but a heck of a lot better than the Fusion IO card at 899 for 80 gig. Um, and, you know, it's it's going toe to toe with that thing. So we're, I'm working on a full review of it right now. We've got benchmarks from all corners of uh, our test lab uh, that I'm going to throw at this thing, and uh, the numbers are looking sweet. Well, that sounds pretty understandable. Let's move to the segment where we confuse me. Now, Marco, I know you guys did a graphics card showdown. Could you actually explain it to the point where I understand it? Yes, this is actually the perfect article to unconfuse you. So our man, Matt Miranda, took a trio of upper mainstream uh, NVIDIA-powered graphics cards. We have a 2 gigabyte Zotac GeForce GTX 460, a overclocked MSI Hawks GeForce GTX 460, and a overclocked gigabyte GeForce GTX 470. So now it's not just a, a straight-up review of the cards. What we wanted to find out is, you know, where's the best bang for the buck because all three of these cards are within, you know, 70, 100 bucks of each other. So which is the, really the best one to buy, you know, if you're concerned about your budget? And you'd think, okay, just buy the fastest one and be done with it. And if you don't care about money, okay, fine, that's the way, you know, most gamers would go. But you find that the one gigabyte GTX 460, when it's overclocked, offers like, you know, 80 to 90% of the performance of the 470, but it's much cheaper. And the extra memory on the Zotac card didn't really help it at all. So it turns out that the, you know, technically the lowest end card, once you tweak and overclock, ends up being the best buy. It's, it's an interesting article. So what kind of tests did you use? Did you just use benchmarks? Did you try real world tests? How did you gauge the performance? You said it was 80 to 90 percent of one of the, the, the more expensive ones. How can you tell? So, well, it really depends on the test. So we use a combination of, of canned benchmarks like, you know, 3D Mark Vantage or uh, Unigine Heaven. 
We use our custom game tests. You know, and because this was sort of a tweaker type article, Matt also measured power consumption and overclocked each card individually to see how much extra performance we can pull from the cards. So taking all things into consideration with price kind of came up with the conclusion that the MSI card was the way to go. So it's like the best pound for pound fighter kind of standard. Basically, yes. Interesting. Very interesting. A throw and I, I kind of understand this. This is good. And, way, gonna... and, and on a quick side note, I just have to give Matt Miranda props for taking the best pictures on the internet. Okay, that's Matt all I have. rocks. <laughs> you can see those pictures at hotharbor.com. So go check that out. Let's talk about something way easy to understand. You can wrap your mind around this pretty easily. A solar-powered keyboard. It's wireless, it's from Logitech, and you're not going to need batteries anymore. Dave, what do you know about this thing? Yeah, you know, it, it, it blows me away that, you know, we've had solar-powered calculators before, right? And uh, why haven't we done this yet? You know, it's kind of one of those things that, yeah, of course, why not? Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of power to... I don't know what's in the keyboard these days. I, you know, 8-bit microcontroller, 16, 32-bit microcontroller. It's, there's nothing fancy for processing power in a keyboard, and it certainly can't take a lot of juice. Since uh, Logitech uh, came up with the uh, wireless solar keyboard K750, uh, the thing is a third of an inch thick because you don't need battery slots anymore. It's so it's super sleek and thin on your desktop, and. Um, it, it the, the word is, at least Logitech claims, that it'll run up to three months in total darkness if it's fully charged. Uh, you know, once you get a light source to it and charge it fully, it'll operate for up to three months in total darkness. It's impressive. I've also read, think? I've read that it actually can handle artificial light as well. You don't need to keep it by a window. I wonder right. if my dual monitors can keep it powered forever. You know, I, I run a 30-inch panel, and that thing's, you know, cranking out some lumens, dude. <laughs> so you would think there'd be a light source there, and certainly overhead lighting. You've, you've got that in the office. Um, it, it actually comes with a, a solar app, or Logitech uh, has available for download the, the solar app that uh, features a lux meter and, um, you know, to make sure you have the necessary light, gives you information at a glance for, uh, for battery levels, and even alerts you when, of course, you're you know getting low on juice. Um, but it's a it's a sleek looking keyboard. Um, you know why why are we you know for wireless keyboards why are we wasting batteries? And you know we're not green throwing you know if you're not using rechargeable batteries you're throwing away batteries. It's it's a natural. It's it's really you know why haven't we done it before? Marco, what do you think about it though? You're the keyboard aficionado. I know this thing's probably got a membrane key switch underneath, and you're thinking, eh, I don't, you know, it's not, it's not deluxe enough for you, right? I, for anything but my main rig where I have to get work done and write thousands of words a week, um, it'd probably be great. I'm sure it would look great, you know, in a kitchen, what have you. Um, for everyday work, for, for me, probably not, but it, it looks really cool. Well, and you're not the average bear when it comes to keyboard use, that's for sure. No. Um, Marker, yeah, I think you, I think you nailed it. This thing is perfect on the kitchen counter. It's certainly perfect in, you know, sort of office applications where there's some light duty nine to five stuff. But guys like Marco and I, we we need these big, you know, behemoths that we can bang on, and they're wired to our computer. But other than that, this is pretty cool. I'm sure you could hack it into like an IBM Type M, you know, if you really, <laughs> really try. If you yeah, really Marco believe can figure it, it out. can happen, Marco, make it happen. Forget, let, let's, let's move to something completely different. Let's talk about video games. Let's get off our butts and play the Microsoft Xbox 360 Connect because that just got released. Now, what do you guys know about this, Marco? What do you got? So uh, we know what, you know, basically everybody else knows. It's been talked about forever since it was uh, Project Natal or, you know, Natal. Natal. And then how you want to pronounce that. Um, so, it, yeah, it finally shipped. Natal. It's Microsoft's you know, move controller, so you don't have to actually hold anything in your hand. You place the Connect mm -hmm. under your TV or, you know, two to, two to six feet off the ground, Microsoft says. Plug it into your Xbox 360, and with, you know, Connect-enabled games, it's going to track your movements as long as you're with, within range of the Connect. R really cool. Now, the 360 came out a really long time ago, so it's got some pretty old hardware in there. How is the performance of a Kinect when attached to an Xbox 360? Like, is, it, is performance really getting bogged down by these cameras and mics trying to track you all the time? See, this is actually, that's an interesting question. Um, during its development, 
there were rumors that the device, you know, maybe it's going to sap 10, 15, 20 percent of the CPU performance in the Xbox. And, you know, that was completely unoptimized code, early code, just as the thing was getting worked on. And it's come out recently that CPU utilization is actually down in, in the single digits. And some reps from Microsoft have also said that many of the current games, because it's really so difficult to create multi-threaded code that's going to tax all of the CPU cores in an Xbox, that there is headroom in those CPUs. So the Kinect is really just using those unused CPU cycles, and it shouldn't affect the performance of, of games. So efficient, so it, it, it's, it's software that's been written efficiently to actually take advantage of all the hardware? Like, well, I, I wouldn't go that far. What it, what it is is, you know, if you, if you run a game um, on a multi-core system, it's not going to tax all of the cores all of the time. So there is available headroom in the chips. So plugging in a device like the Kinect, as long as it's not killing the CPU performance, if it's just using a little bit, it shouldn't affect anything else because the headroom is there. You know what doesn't take a lot of processor work? Voting. There's some new features at Hot Hardware. Dave, can you tell the audience about it? Yeah, it's simple stuff. Um, we're always working on the engine at, at Hot Hardware. It's, it's something that's near and dear to our heart. Um, we're geeks, and so we're always tinkering under the hood, and we certainly do that in terms of the site engine as well as our computer engines. Um, so, yeah, we added uh, uh, some additional features, some new features to hothardware.com. We've got uh, voting for comments in the comments section of the site. So if you're in the news and you have something to say and it's really good, then people are going to vote you up and uh, you're going to get you know a, a ranking amongst your peers for your contribution to the conversation. And if you say something that's um, not favored well, then you're going to know that too. You're going to get feedback from your peers and they're going to vote you down. And, you and one of the things that you guys can vote on right now are the comments in the thread section of the Name This Show article. You can go to this. Yeah, page. maybe. You can vote up the actual comments. Marco, could you explain the contest again for those of you who don't know what's going on? And also, uh, how do people enter? Yeah, so just to put it simply, we need a good name for the podcast. So we're asking everybody out there to submit their best entries because we need a name. So we want your ideas. We want to use the best one. And whosever name we pick is going to win an awesome gaming system built by this guy. Now, this guy. Now, I heard, <laughs> I heard that things have changed. You actually have some new gear that is going into this box. What new stuff is coming in to the gaming rig that you were building? Yeah, so we're, we're going to up the ante uh, just a little bit. Uh, Asus came through with a, a little bit of extra gear. So... In addition to all of the hardware we've already mentioned that's going to be in the gaming rig, we're going to be adding a uh, Zonar D2X sound card and yeah. an Asus Blu-ray drive. So you're now looking at basically some of the best parts in every category going in this rig. So now that we're putting in all this extra stuff, we want the really good submissions now. Okay, so whatever yeah. you guys have been writing. None of this stuff we already got. Give us the good stuff Let's now. step it up. Let's, <laughs> let's really get something really interesting, original, SEO friendly. You can find it on iTunes. Awesomeness. That should there be the title. Go. That's way too long. Don't, don't actually submit that. But try something out. You can go put, put it in the comments, send an email, do whatever. Just, just get it to us somehow. We'll have oh, a actually, I, I should probably explain that, shouldn't I? Maybe um, you should. You can either send an email to podcast at hothardware.com or just come right to the site, hit the, uh, the contest page, and comment right there. And yeah, Hot Hardware's Radiant Techno Drip. Um, <laughs> that's unique. We, <laughs> we don't really know what you were on when you actually put that comment there, but uh, we would like some of it. Anyway. Real Neil, Real Neil's the guy that contributed that, and uh, he's the man. He's, he's been a, a long-time contributor to the site. We love you, Neil, but uh, that one was out there, bro. You were, you were creative. We'll I'll, I'll mock you anyway. <laughs> Anyway, you can find Hot Hardware all over the web first. And for, foremost, you can find us at hothardware.com. Or you can go to dig.com slash hothardware. You can go to twitter.com slash hothardware. Facebook.com slash hothardware. YouTube.com slash hothardwarevids. And that's it. 